I recently posted a video about cleaning up the debris around these big old trees to help them survive a wildfire. Since we started putting wildfires out 100 years ago that would normally keep this stuff cleaned up, it's built up so deep when we do have a fire come through here someday, this is going to burn so hot around the base of the tree, it will likely scorch the base of it and kill what would otherwise be a fire resistant tree. As I mentioned in that video, part of the problem is there are so many trees out there that need this done to them. Who's going to do the work? How are we going to get all these trees done? There are so many trees out there that have all this material around them that are going to get killed in the next fire. Who's going to do the work? We found a solution for this place. I'm just cleaning up a few that we missed. Last week my dad got a crew, a small crew of volunteers to come up here to our family's forest land. They came up here and cleaned around the bases of these big old growth ponderosa pines on our property. They were happy to do it. We had a picnic lunch. They had a good time. It was a good day, a good productive day. This side, the fire's probably going to burn a lot of this out. Yeah, and then you have the little hollow, right? Yeah, but we don't really have to worry about it killing this side of the tree because this side's already dead. But the less fuel we have around it, maybe the less it will burn out of that and compromise the structure of it. I think there are a lot of people who know our forests are in really bad shape. They would like to be able to do something, but they just don't know what to do. And a lot of times, I think they just need someone to lead. They need someone to point them in the right direction, give them a little bit of guidance, show them what to do, arrange the thing, arrange the time and the place. A lot of people don't get to spend much time out in the forest. And this is just an opportunity for them to be able to go out in the woods and do something and feel like they are accomplishing something. Feel like they're actually contributing to the forest. I think it would be great to have more people arranging these kind of work parties. Places like Meetup, they have hiking groups, all kinds of outdoor activity groups. But how many of them are dedicated toward, let's go out in the forest and make the forest better. Let's, for example, clean up around the base of these trees. Traditional outdoor recreation activities are fun, but I think it could be more satisfying to go out into the forest and actually contribute something, make the forest a better place. It can be a more rewarding thing to do in the forest. Maybe where you are, this is not a problem in the forest where you are. What we found here is the pines have this problem. These big old growth ponderosa pines are the ones who have this big accumulation. The Douglas fir, the white fir, they don't have this flaky bark that accumulates around the base that is very slow to decay. A tree like this has bark that's so thick and this duff is not real thick. It would probably be just fine in a fire. And the needles on the fir trees decay faster. Pine needles are adapted to burn every few years instead of rotting away like a lot of foliage. Many of our forests are in desperate need of being thinned out, but that's probably not a good activity for a volunteer group. You just can't go out in the wilderness and start cutting down trees unless you own them or have a permit. And those kind of more dangerous activities have liability, plus you need more experience and expertise to do thinning. But something like this is something any just or just about any able-bodied person could do. Maybe the forests where you are don't have this particular problem. This is more of a ponderosa pine problem, probably other pines too, but there are probably other problems in the forest that a volunteer group could do a lot to solve. You're not going to solve all the problems, but maybe in a small area like this, you can make a difference. This video was partly inspired by 
a lot of viewers on this channel who contact me often wanting to know if they can come work for me. Most of them saying they're not looking to get paid, they just want to get the experience. I'm still not sure what to do about that situation. On one hand, I think it would be great to be able to accommodate that, to be able to have people come out and we can all do good things for the woods or even have long-term people be able to come out and I can point them in the right direction to do good things for the forest. A lot of them are out of the area, so there would be housing challenges. One of the biggest things I'm concerned about is liability plus vetting people. I think most of them are probably good intentioned, but people off the internet, well, most of them are probably good intentioned. The point of that is I know there are a lot of people out there who would love to be able to go out in the woods and do something constructive. I think they just need someone to point them in the right direction and guide them. Maybe I can inspire someone to set up a local group like this in their local area. Even if you really aren't doing that much for the forest, I think that kind of thing is good for people to be able to have that kind of experience. Even if you're really not doing that much to make the forest better, you might be doing a lot to make people better. There are a lot of people, big old grouse over there. It's like a mountain chicken. I think getting involved with something you're passionate about on a local level and actually accomplishing something is far more productive than sitting around watching the news, getting upset about politics. I think something like this would be great for a lot of retired people. A lot of them have a lot of free time. It could be a good social activity, get them out in the outdoors, get some exercise, and a sense of accomplishment. You may not have access to forest land like I do, but you could contact the Forest Service, whatever agencies are managing land in your area, county extension services, there are all kinds of agencies you could probably find out what the forest really needs. You might find people who can help you and guide you in arranging these kind of volunteer parties. You can set up Facebook groups, meetup groups. I think it would be a fun way to meet people and build community. When I do a video like this, it's common for some maybe well-intentioned but probably uninformed person to make a comment like, quit trying to meddle with nature. Leave nature alone. Nature will take care of nature. Nature doesn't need humans messing with it. The problem with that is this is no longer nature. Our western forests are no longer natural. We took nature out of nature by taking fire out of it for a hundred years. One of nature's major tools it had to maintain the forests was periodic fire that would burn through every few years at least these type of pine forests. We took that away for a hundred years. If you think we need to leave nature to nature, I need to inform you that ship sailed a hundred years ago. That ship is long gone. I know that doing something like this is not for everybody. It's probably not for most people and that's okay. But for those who this does resonate with, I just wanted to throw out some food for thought. And if you do arrange something like this, send me a message. I'd love to hear about it. So the pines are creating all this material. The cedars are not, but the pine is putting the material around the cedar. So these cedars are in danger just from being next to the pine. So we have to clean them up too.